<laughs> All right, welcome back for another D4 video. The plan this week is to go over this engine, get it buttoned up, ready for paint. Quite a few things I gotta do here. Uh, first is I'm gonna convert it over to 12 volt direct start like the old engine. Gotta go through and close up all these panels I opened up when I was checking it out and uh, make sure everything is sealed up nice. Check out the oiling system, replace the fuel filters. This, this engine did not come with a flywheel so I gotta install the old flywheel. Clean out, like inside of the uh, bell housing here, it's quite gross so I'll clean that out. Just basically get it nice and clean. I don't wanna be working on it after it's painted because then it's just gonna get more junk on it. Over on the transmission case cover, off camera this week, I torqued everything down to spec. I ran RTV over all these panels that need to be sealed and torqued all that stuff down. For the steering clutch cover and the main clutch cover, I had a cork gasket that I made. And what I did there is I did a uh, Permatex number three and then the cork gasket and then grease um, and then the cover. And the reason that for that is they need to come off occasionally and you don't want the cork to stick to the cover, but you actually want it to be sealed. I did rebuild the shifter on camera. I'll splice that video in at some point in this video. It's so much nicer than it was. Basically all new parts except for like a, a couple things, you'll see. The one other thing I haven't installed yet is this. This is the winch like gear selector. I started to paint it, but then I noticed we have what appears to be baby's first welding job going on. So I gotta fix that first. I'll just grind it down and uh, patch that up. I definitely have not been sitting on the back of this pretending like I was driving it though. In the previous video, I adjusted the brakes before the cover was on. That was dumb, don't do that. Basically, you need to put these pedals back in, which I've done, and uh, they, the stop is the actual case. So you have to adjust them once it's all back together, which is not a big deal. It's just a 916 socket that goes right in there that you can adjust, or there's probably a $400 cat tool. Down here, I reinstalled the cover. I guess we should talk about that. There's still some RTV barfing out of there. That's fine. So before I installed the cover, I took the least fat of my fingers, which is the pinky, and I ran it in there right on the inside edge, which I hadn't, I guess I hadn't done before, and there was a ton of grit. And let me, let me show you what I got. So here's the three pieces I found right here. And uh, did a little CSI investigation here and found that this is definitely a piece of the gear. So it actually, this makes me feel a lot better because since there's, this is all I found and I'm 100% sure I got all the, the crap out of that case, that means that someone before had taken the, the, the chips out so it was an old repair and they just didn't catch these last few pieces that were in the bottom of the case. So we'll call that 100% uh, done. I'm not really sure where to start with this. Uh, since this plate's open, I guess I'll start with the fuel system. First thing I want to do is close this plate up. Originally, I was, I was planning on readjusting all this stuff, but I think I'll just run it for a while and see how it actually runs. This engine looks like it was rebuilt recently, uh, with the internals at least, so there's a good chance this is all going to run just fine. But I don't want to get a bunch of junk in here because this is all like the uh, really important stuff. In case you missed it, I've already kind of looked over this engine a tiny bit just to make sure it rotates and all the insides looked okay. Um, if you look in the, the description of this video, you'll see a playlist with all the D4 videos I've been doing. It's bad timing, dog. Easy. Easy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Saw a lot of people asking why I hadn't started this thing. Uh, besides not having a proper engine stand to hold it, this, this engine is so simple, it's, it's going to start. I have no doubt. Um, I mean, as long as the inside's not rusted out like the old engine, the fuel system works, that's about it. So I, I'm sure it's going to start. Okay, so uh, now I need to install, these are the injectors here, but I need to install the lines that go up to the valves. This, there's some dirt in there, and that looks like a spring retainer. That's a little bit worrisome. Okay, that's cleaned out. I think these are the valves. They go in, they go in there. These are uh, pretty dirty. They have a lot of carbon on them, so I'll clean them up. They're really easy to clean. Basically, just unscrew it. There's a screen in there, which, if you can see, that's full of junk. 
Uh, so basically you just spray it out with brake clean, brush that off. That's what the, I believe that's what the manual says to do. Should probably replace these O-rings. In there. I was peeling off the O-ring for this one and you can see the hole there. It's, this thing is falling apart. Fortunately, I have a spare engine, so this one is off the other engine and it's, it's good. Yeah, cylinder number two had the same thing. I think it's just a different design because it looks a little bit different on several, diff several different ways. I'm gonna have to loosen these again when I uh, bleed the system, but I'm gonna pressure wash it probably first. Well, I guess since I'm doing the fuel stuff, I'll go ahead and take the fuel filters out. I actually ordered two gaskets. I think, I think you need two gaskets to take this out if I remember from the other one. So those are on the way along with the fuel filters. And uh, I'm not sure, this is a prime? What, I don't know what this is, but uh, we'll figure that out next. I also, so there's two fuel uh, gauges on here. This one's pretty nasty. This one is plugged into an oil port. I think they just did it to, to just to block it off. So I'll probably take the other one and I think it's supposed to go in here. So I'll go ahead and put that in and uh, get this old crappy one out of the way. gasket oh well not anymore I was gonna say it's in decent shape ooh it's red I don't know why I'm surprised I mean that's some dirt there I did get new filters obviously yeah there's some sludge in there it's not too bad so I think what I can do if I remember correctly you open this up and it'll drain everything out of the tower and then I can clean it out real good. This is the inlet right here in the pump, but I believe I can drain that out. You don't have to, I mean, this, this is obviously on the unfiltered side, so it's not the biggest deal. You just want the big stuff out of there, but since I'm here, I might as well clean it out well. Ah, what? Oh yeah, there it is, okay. So I have no idea how long this engine's been sitting, by the way, I think I've made that clear. Uh, it, it could have been anywhere from one year to 30 years, I have no idea. This diesel doesn't look too bad, there's not like any, doesn't smell like diesel, that's probably not a good sign. There's some sludge in there, it's okay. I think I'm gonna take the transfer pump off just cause there was so much gross gel and not all of it washed out. Like just a little bit comes out right here, but I think it's settling in the bottom. So I'll take the whole pump out, clean it out. It's actually a lot easier obviously to do this now before it's mounted on the machine. So better safe than sorry. Yeah, there's a bunch of, a bunch of crap on the bottom here, see that? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely been water on the bottom of here. As you'd expect, it's been sitting here for so long. This lower part can come off too. Actually, I'm not gonna take that off and I'll show you the reason I, I started taking it off. Because I came up here, so right here is the, uh, this goes into the injection pump, so that's why I have it blocked off. I forget what this is. It goes, I don't know, over there somewhere. This one though, I sprayed in, I sprayed in a ton of brake fluid and it filled all the way to the top and wasn't coming out, but it's dripping out. That's where it comes out is, is back here. So now that it's, I know that that passage is clear, I'll just stop taking it apart at this point. Any, any water in the fuel is gonna settle to the bottom. That, that's where it had settled. That's why there's a bunch of grit and crap in there. All right, got it pretty cleaned out in there. There was a lot of sludge on the bottom of there. You can probably see the remnants of that. 
And once the brake cleaner dries out, I'll probably vacuum that out. Over here on my rebuild table, everything's ready to go. There apparently is no gasket from here and then up in here. It just bolts in, so that's nice. These parts are pretty clean, you'll notice that. That is thanks to a subscriber, Adam, that sent me a parts cleaner. Thank you very much, I've been using that, and you can see the results here. All right, well, while we're on the topic of that, sometimes people will send me an email asking how to like support the channel monetarily. Uh, you know, guys, I'm not here to make money. I'm not, I don't wanna quit my day job. I'm just making videos of what I'm doing. If you wanna support the channel, just watch the videos. And you're watching this right now, so you've already done it. Thank you. And that leads us right into the sponsor for this video, Herbrand Tools. Now, they did go out of business about 30 to 40 years ago, but I have a lot of their wrenches, and if they ever come back into business, well, uh, here's the advertisement. They work okay. Made in the USA. So the way that works, if you don't know, is this is only going to strip metric bolts. Kind of surprised this doesn't uh, use any gaskets on this part, but there is so many bolts that I guess maybe that holds it together. These faces are machined pretty nice. Let's put this gear in first. went that this is the bypass I believe I remember that from when I read the book I let this set for a sec and then I take the cover off and I'm not happy with how much RTV is getting in these ports so I clean the ports out I kind of reduce the amount of RTV that's around and uh, they clean this one out too I'd rather it leak than it get clogged up there was no copper washer on this. I'm assuming it needs one, so I put one on. That's probably why this thing was on about 800 foot-pounds. It's because there was no washer and it was leaking. All right, I got the new filters in and I got two gaskets. I think these are the first gaskets I've actually pur purchased for this tractor. But I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking, these, uh, taking the fuel tower off and on a couple times. These appear to just to be like a, a wire mesh screen wrapped with string, so I'm sure that's fine. And there was a Napa part number that I found, but this was the uh, interchange, it's also a cat number. And these were a lot cheaper. I think these were like $10 each, which is the Napa were 20 or $30 each, quite a bit more, but it, they're the same construction. They have the same string or, or yarn or whatever you call it. I think it's cotton that's just wrapped around a tube. Now these are about a pound each and soaked with diesel, so these will make good uh, fire starters for the wood stove. I'm sure my wife will appreciate that. And I believe this went in here. It fits. These are the right size, right? Yep. Well, holes line up. That's a good sign. There's not really a, I don't know how tight, hard to tighten these things, but I guess as long as they're in there, it's okay. This is actually the cap from the other engine, but uh, I liked it because this purge is a solid piece where the other one was like bent and it was like a really thin tin piece. Before I forget, I'm gonna get this fuel gauge situated right. Okay, so it's run, it's routing behind here. It comes straight through. There's enough slack for it to stick out. Unfortunately, on the both of these gauges, it's a 90 degree fitting, so I'm gonna get a straight fitting so I can, you know, attach it. And but that's how it's gonna go. So that was nice. The old engine didn't have this. This is a nice uh, addition so you can check fuel pressure. Anyway, I think that's it for the fuel system. Uh, but one last thing is when I go to change oil, I'm gonna drain the oil in here and, and change that out, obviously. Um, I think the drain... All right, well, onto the oiling system, now that the fuel's done. There is oil in here. Looks 
looks pretty clean. So I, I, maybe they just poured some in for storage. I, but this, I have no way of knowing how long this engine has sat. So I'd like to get the oil circulating through without, before I start it, just to pre-lube everything. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like this. It's just, it's, you can tell it's been sitting for a while, so there's just rust built up everywhere and grime. And we'll see what the filter looks like when I pull that, but we'll lube it up, we'll clean it out, everything out really good, and then we'll change the oil, let it run, and then change it again. So I think pretty much the whole oiling system is right here on the side. You have the dipstick, this is the filter, this is the fill, this is just the crankcase breather. Um, but basically the pump's right there, and it pumps it out into this line, which goes into the main bearings. There's also a line that runs over into the gear drive here, which runs the cam gear and all that. And then there's a line that goes up into the, to the valve area. So it's a pretty simple system. And if I, this is right where that fuel gauge was, and I think the oil gauge is supposed to plug in there. So I think if I tap into here, I'm gonna to try to run some pressure through there and see if I can pump oil all through this thing. This did originally have an oil cooler, which went, this is the inlet and outlet right here. Apparently, I did some reading on that. That was very, very common to, to delete that. It was just on the really old, early oils. They, uh, they were just, they needed to be cooled. I can see some RTV here. So this is not mine. I'm gonna have to take this off to put the generator in anyways. So I might as well take this off now. That way I can see into the gear drive and see if there's any problems. Missing a bolt there. That's nice. Well, it looks okay. There's that string of RTV that's hanging down, which I will get. But if you remember what the other cam gear looked like, I think we're in good shape here. Okay, so this is the uh, oil pressure gauge outlet. And I'm going to put this fitting on here. It's putting some pressure out. What am I hearing? Oh! I don't, why is there a passage? Uh, that's gotta just be a drill hole for the oiling port. So I need to get the, uh, I'll just put the other cover on now since I have to do that anyways. I think this is it right here. A lot of bolts on there, those are probably aren't too important. Just dump those out. There we go. So this should mount up here. Now the other, uh, I got the other side clean. It was actually RTV'd over the original gasket material, but in their defense, that original gasket material, I think was made out of concrete because it took me about 15 minutes with a knotted wire wheel brush to get it off. This bolt is no longer used since it's obviously what's going to be in the way. So once this is done, it'll plug up this oil port and then I'll be good to uh, keep running oil through everything. I also got RTV in a uh, Easy Cheese can here. I've never tried this before. We'll see how this goes. Go. It takes a little bit, it's a little bit different, but this is actually really nice. We'll see how, uh, put the cap on. We'll see how long this lasts until it hardens up inside of the case. So I just spent about 20 minutes cleaning up these studs that go in here. And I just realized, I looked at the, the uh, generator and this is, you do not need studs, you can just use bolts. So I just wasted a ton of time. I was waiting for that RTV to dry and I kind of got to thinking about this. Probably not the best idea to pull oil from the pan unfiltered and run it through the engine. I mean, first of all, that stuff was not really even approaching the consistency of oil. It was more like molasses and uh, unfiltered. It's been sitting for who knows how long. So I, I just poured a bunch of leftover oil that I had like, you know, half of a quart of into here. And so this is all clean oil that does not need to be filtered really. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pump that through. And I just don't want to pump like dirt and crap into the, the bearings that are just going to get stuck. 
So anyway, we'll continue on with the pumping here and see what happens. I'm hearing noises throughout the block here. That's probably a, a good sign. Okay, so we in here we got a main. I don't know if you can see that, but there is fresh oil dripping down right there. I hear it dripping down, so that's good. That's what I was hoping to accomplish. What I would like to see is fresh oil coming out up here, and I can hear air coming out. So, yeah, so if I can get uh, oil coming out up here, this is the highest point, then I'll know everything's been pretty well pre-lubed and I don't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it's really hard to push this through. Uh, it's not purging air through the top up here anymore, so I think we're pretty close to oil coming out, hopefully. My arm's getting tired. All right, well, we got oil dripping out through here. Oil enters, I believe, uh, from this line up into here. So all these are dripping and this is the, the furthest one away. So if this is dripping, we're good. We definitely got lubrication all the way down the valve train here. In here, we got fresh oil on this gear, which is a good sign. Is that <laughs> so yeah, these, uh, there's oil dripping down. That's a great sign. Well, I'm really happy that worked because I was not sure it was going to, but uh, it did actually work quite well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the generator in. So I, I know from the car world, you can pre-loop an engine by getting the, the tool that goes into the camshaft gear and you run that with your power drill. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to do it. So I'm really glad that this worked, the hand pump idea, because you don't want to start an engine dry normally. That's done, torqued in. Should probably refresh this wiring a little bit. Well, it's not frozen, that's a good sign. It's clean inside. Oh man, a genuine Caterpillar filter. That actually looks pretty good in there. I believe when I took the other filter off, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like bone dry in there. This probably has fresh lube in it from all that oil I pumped through. It probably came back through the filter. Yeah. No, uh, no washer on here. It's stuck. Nope. But there's a lot of gross oil in there and it's uh, it's draining out through the top so that's just yeah so this is a uh, Napa 1161 hopefully it's the right size that's right that's a relief nope that's way too big also way too big Moving on to the crankcase breather here, I've already gotten the top off. This is something, since this is basically open to the outside, um, I don't wanna go nuts with a pressure washer here. So I'm gonna clean this up by hand, and that way when I come through and pressure wash it, I can kind of just avoid this area. I basically had to take it down to bare metal because there was so much grease on here. Yeah, it looks good in there. I think just this thing needs to be cleaned out. All right, got this area cleaned up. Uh, this thing's pretty clean. It's, it's actually uh, primed on the inside by Cat, which is nice. <clears throat> Get the gasket maker out. 
By the way, just like cheese, this is the best way to get your RTV in a pressurized can like this. It's, uh, I'm a believer, it's just so convenient. Yeah, this is, uh, oh, it's cork. Oh, that makes it easy. Oh, that's hard. All right. This thing is really sticky on here, too. And I think it's because of the just the rust scale built up around here. The dipstick looks good, though, except for all the rust on the end. All right. Back to the shifter here. So this, this is the original style shifter from my serial number should be in here and it's not the same shifter. And I think the reason they changed it is I have the newer clutch control and the newer clutch control has a pivot point that's integrated into the bottom of the shifter. It's, a, it's like a separate plate. Here, this is the straight shift, uh, straight clutch. It doesn't have that. I, I don't even know how it's connected on there. So I'm guessing that's why they swapped the shifter over. I was able to find uh, these two parts I found them on, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So these were obviously, these I think go like that. There's a seal in between them and uh, these are just com completely rusted. So fortunately I was able to replace those. This is the bottom plate that the boot goes around and this thing is pretty uh, pitted up. It's not really structural. So I'll see if I can do something to fix that. We'll get to that in a second. Got the new boot here and it's, it's exact, it's exactly right. It's the like a looks exactly like the old one so that's good I got the shifter painted oh I also found a new seal too which I looked up the seal part number and this was listed as the replacement part uh, so this is what the seal looks like oh, I also ordered a new spring since this one's pretty rusty I was gonna I, I found this but I didn't order it because this one's in decent shape so I'm still waiting for uh, these two parts to come in so I'll work on this here while I'm waiting and uh, what I'm thinking is I got some wire rod and if I can run it around the inside just to like make it stronger so it doesn't collapse because this is like paper thin metal. It's really, really thin, especially where it's rusted. Um, and I think this just gives the boot something to sit on. So this socket I think is the perfect diameter. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, since this is so thin of metal, I, I, and I don't have shielding gas set up on my MIG welder, um, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do acetylene. I haven't done that for about 20 years, but all I really need to do is just fuse these ends together and maybe just fuse it in a few spots around here and uh, just to keep it in place, and I think I should be good. I mean, all I'm trying to do here is just make it a little more structurally sound. It's already better with this ring in here. All right, the smallest tip I got is a number four, which is probably too big. I probably want a number two or a zero, but uh, I'll be really gentle with the heat on here. And just in case if I need it, I got some RG45 wire I can feed in there if I start burning holes and stuff. But uh, this shouldn't be too bad. As long as I'm just really slow with the heat, I think it'll work. There we go. Let's do Whoop. All right, I'm just going to go a couple spots just to pack it in. So I've tacked it in four places and then I fuse the wire right there. It's not pretty, but you know, it's been 20 years. I think this will be fine. I'm just going to grind it down now. Remove all the sharp edges. I don't want it cutting into the boot and uh, we'll call this repair done. Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. And then the replacement for this plate I also got. 
And this is, this is about twice as heavy too. And I got a new spring. And then I'm gonna reuse this because this was in fine condition. I did find that part though. I could have replaced it if I wanted to. All right, let's talk about manuals and parts real quick because I see this question a lot. So first off for manuals, I've rebuilt a lot of different machines over the years and eBay always has reprints of basically every machine ever made, it seems. Uh, the problem with the cat stuff here is you need all four of these manuals. So this is the uh, operator manual, the service manual, the parts manual, and then you need a separate engine service manual if you want to do engine work. So it really adds up. So this one was 25, that was 30, that was almost 50 bucks. That was uh, 28, I had the prices written down on them. So I'm in for about, what, 130 bucks for all four manuals. Uh, and then you also kind of have to be worried because some of these, the reprint quality is not the best. I don't know if you can tell, like just, it's just not a good scan. This one is especially bad. It's just not the best pictures. The parts manual is actually good, but this was the most expensive manual, it was 50 bucks. It's pretty good quality and I think this one, this one was okay, not the best. So that's another thing you have to consider. Not all the reprints, some of them are worse than others. It just depends on who's doing it. So if you want to save a few dollars, you can join the Antique Caterpillar Owners Club. I think it's like acmoc.org. I'll put, I'll put a link in the first pinned comment down below. But they have scans of most of these documents. I looked for the D4, they had everything except for the service manual. I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't see it on there. Uh, but for 40 bucks a year, you have access to a, a ton of old cat manuals, parts, you know, parts, all the stuff that, uh, a lot of the stuff that you might need, especially if you're just doing a little bit of work and you just need, you know, to quickly check a parts diagram, that's probably the way to go. I mean, just this book, like I said, 50 bucks. So that's a year membership right there. That's less than a year or more than a year membership. The only issues you can't save the files. You can't, I don't think you can do a direct print. You can like screenshot them. But uh, I think that's relation. That's because of their their copyright agreement with Cat. Uh, but the other benefit is you also can. They have a forum. You can read the forum for free now. But they uh, you can also post questions on there. And there's a ton of guys that are very helpful to help me out. I joined probably halfway into this project, and uh, it, it was. Uh, I'm glad I did. I I hate joining uh, membership stuff because I don't know. I just feel like. I, I, it's just a weird feeling. I just don't like doing it, but I'm glad I did because I, I've gotten my $40 worth out of it for sure. It's only been about three months too. Yeah, my, my biggest issue with that site though is if you're not a member and you go there, it just says they have a lot of tech, technical documents. It doesn't say what they actually have. So they really need to have a publicly searchable database that you can see what they have before you actually pay for it. All right, for parts, uh, there's really two two options here. So if I needed like to get a new one of these, for example, I would immediately go to the General Gear website. There's an email you can just type in and ask you if you give them the part number and tell them what it is and what it's off of. They have it. I mean, they he's he scraps out tons and tons of machines and he has basically any replacement part that's not a consumable. He also has the steering clutches, the main clutches. If it's something like this, uh, I just take the part number and I put it into Google. And like 99% of the time it shows up on eBay. On this old cat stuff, the part numbers are always, always six digits long, even when they're not six digits long in the parts manual. So for example here, here's a normal part number for this boot, which is six or eight F eight Oh seven nine. So it's number, letter, number, 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 number. Right below it is L dash eight, eight, eight. So that's only four digits. You have to stuff in the missing digits with zeros. So if you go and you search for L-888, you will, you will find nothing. But if you search for 0L-0888, you will find this, which I think was like $10 on eBay for this, for, this, uh, for this cover here. Now, I could have also gone to General Good Gear and gotten one that was probably in okay condition off of a, a wrecked one, but it's always worth it just to go look online first and you'll find it. So that's, that's really all I'm doing for parts. Um, I know, I, I, I think I saw uh, on Squash's channel, he gets some stuff from Floor and Tractor. I, I've never used them, I, I don't know about them, but um, you know, in the first comment on this video, I will post, I'll, I'll do a sticky of all the links of where I found stuff, and you can see there, or you can add stuff if you have any other suggestions for other people. This goes in here.
And this is the seal, which goes like this. Just trying to figure out what we're trying to seal out with this thing. Maybe this is actually isn't a seal. Maybe this is just like a, uh, just a, a bearing kind of thing where it's helping it rotate. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what I should grease. So I should probably grease the inside of this cup. All right. So, I don't know, maybe I should just put a ring around the outside of this too. Okay, let me get all this stuff pretty greased up here. So that goes there, and a gasket. I'm just following the, uh, the exploded diagram here. And then this. This, this, here, and cap. I just need a cotter pin. Just gotta get this boot over the lip. All right, so I gotta put, there's a washer that goes over I didn't realize it until I looked at the parts diagram that goes over the top of the boot uh, right around this thing. And then I need to put the handle on, but that's it. I'm really glad I rebuilt this thing though because, I mean, I could have just said, oh, it's fine and thrown it on, but it, uh, it had holes in it and, and this is water that would go right into transmission. And plus it was all rusting out inside. Now I've pre-painted this thing because I do not want to paint over the rubber. I just, there's nothing worse than Paint it over rubber. That's some smooth shifting action. Now it's gonna wear all the paint off on the shifter, of course, that's fine. As long as the boot looks good. The interlock work. Oh yeah, let's try it in gear. I think before last time it didn't work when it was in gear and then you had the interlock on. Yeah, that's solid. Yes. All right. I'm glad, really happy that works. I guess I'll end the video here and then pick up next week with doing the 12 volt direct start conversion. Now I know a lot of people are going to probably going to get upset about that because I don't have a pony motor, you know, how it was originally done. And well, I, I don't have the pony motor, but the, the modifications you're gonna see are, if you ever wanted to go back to a pony, there's no permanent modifications that are, that are gonna be done that's gonna mess anything up. So I could always go back to a pony if it doesn't work out. The current pl painting plan is I'm gonna use this stuff. I've, I've heard it works really well on really greasy stuff, ram cleaner. Uh, I'll, I'll pressure wash it first, then I'll put this stuff on to uh, get the big stuff off. I'm going to be using an uh, adhesion promoter. I've used this before on, in, in cars and it works really well. And then this is the paint I'm using. I get questions about this. So this is the paint I picked out. Uh, it's very, very good stuff and it's matched to Cat Highway Yellow. So I actually need to probably order another gallon. It's going to take at least two gallons to do this and you don't want to finish one gallon and start another. You want to kind of mix as you go or else the paint, the color is going to be all screwed up. I was just planning on painting the engine and the transmission and leaving everything else, but it might be a while before we have good enough weather to roll this thing out and, and clean it really well. So I might go over the undercarriage next, and you know, frankly, I don't think there's gonna be much to do on this undercarriage. Um, we'll, I'll go a bit more in a later episode, but, but basically this undercarriage has been worked on recently. There's a lot of stuff that's been replaced on it, and it's, I think it's in really, really good condition. Um, and, and that's kind of the reason I even bought this thing to begin with. Of course, I'm just going off of my best guess for this. I, I mean, it might be garbage, but I guess we'll find out on a later video. I guess I'm going to end the video there. I, uh, it's, uh, it feels like I haven't done too much, but it has been two weeks and the, uh, the memory card's almost full. I'm not really sure what's on there. I guess we'll find out. No idea how long this video is going to be, but uh, anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll be back soon and uh, take care.